Okay, so this is the answer for uh, whether it is acceptable solution or not. Now, you can see, you need to also have a quite similar, which is do while, do while. To have a variable turn to indicate which process is next. So just now, you can see here, you only have the general one, do and while. And you're going to put anything, uh, especially for your section, on the critical section. But now when you have something like, uh, in the process, you say, okay, after this, where you're going to go? So you're going to add on the while here. So algorithm is correct. One process at time in the critical section. So uh, it's going to be while turn equal to J. Uh, sometime I maybe mean, say, uh, what is J? Later on, you can see, you can see see it clearly we have a numbers requirement for your critical section solution first assume that each process execute at a non zero speed another one is no assumption considering relative speeds of the end uh, and numbers of CPU. So here there is a uh, three things. The algorithm does uh, satisfy the three essential criteria to solve the problem that you see last time in your CS, which is mutual uh, exclusion, process, and bounded weighting. Let's see here the solution to critical section problem. You have just now mutual education. Second one is a process progress and lastly bounded waiting. For mutual education, if process PI is educating in its critical section, that no other processes can be executing in their critical section. Uh, point number two, which is progress. If no pro process is executing in its critical section, then the sele uh, selections of processes that will enter the section uh, next cannot be postponed in the finally and lastly bounded waiting a bound must exist on the numbers of time that other processes are allowed to enter the critical section after process have made has made a request to enter it critical What is this? <laughs> you want to chontek chontek with me? So assume that uh, assume that each process requests at non-zero speed and second one no assumption concerning relative speed order and processes. So let's see here. It can apply to political next. Tapi eh, tadi apply boleh tak close balik? Aku nak pergi ke atas webex ni pun tak boleh. Dia punya mouse tak bergerak. Ado yai jap. And to which mana nak tutup balik? Ha. Huh. Okay, you can see here, there is four types of locking mechanism, which is soft defines, 
hardware support, support from the operating system and lastly support uh, the program language ada renderers. Uh, you can see here all these four but I think uh, we just touch a uh, several uh, mechanism only but it is not in deep. Let's see the first things which is under Patterson solution which is good algorithm software solution you have two process solution so assume that load and store machines language instruction are atomic that is cannot be interrupt this one you already know but this is under a Peterson solution also two processes share a variables which is integer turn and boolean flag the variable turn indicate uh, whose turn it is to enter the critical section so it's depend uh, if you have several process p1 p2 p3 so it's going to indicate which one will be enter the cs and while well, for the flag array it used to indicate if process is ready to enter the critical section. So you can have like flag uh, 0 equal to true. So this uh, flag array is used to indicate the process whether it is ready or not. So it's going to be equal to true implies that P1 is ready. Sometimes we can also have flag zero is false if it is not ready because so there is also another example for the program uh, algorithm for process pi so you have do and while but inside here you have a, a condition you're going to also uh, put the flag which is uh, for you to indicate whether it is ready or not and you you're going to also have the turn turn uh, whether it is like maybe you have 0 and 1 uh, p0 p1 process 0 process 1 so you're going to turn another process similar at the general quite similar at the general uh, process here but you have a flag flag in the section here we're going to have a flag whether this flag is true or false. So while flag, so you're going to have the value of your turn and turn equal to this value. You're going to go to the critical section. Another one, flag equal to false, which is it is not ready. So reminder, you're going to go to the reminder section. So, reminder section we can call also RS. Provable that the three CS critical section require are made under this algorithm. First, mutual execution is preserved. Second, process requirement is satisfied. And lastly, bounded waiting requirement is made. So, these three things are meet already under this Patterson solution. So let's see here example for exercise 2. We have two process. Process P0 and process P1. For P0 uh, and P1, write the uh, Peter, Patterson algorithm for CS solution for process 0. So you just need to remember that, okay, this one is for P0. So you have things, you're going to copy this general. Inside of the value only, you're going to change. 
Similar also for the P1. Let's see the example of the uh, program. But you supposedly in question, you're going to be given the initial share value, which is uh, a flag information, flag zero and flag one. Depend whether uh, which one is a flag zero, flag one equal to false. Flag uh, one is false. So this is the general value or initial value. Both is not ready yet, isn't it? So it is not ready yet. Then you're going to see initially flags are false. When process want to execute a critical session, you need to plan whether you want to execute P0 or P1 first. It's going to set the flag to true. As mentioned also, if flag 1, it if flag equal to is depending on 0 or 1, just now we have two process only. If flag equal to I equal to true, then you're going to be ready. So you have here. So you have here. Uh, You have here flag 0, flag 0 equal to true, means that okay, P0 is already ready. Then you're going to have turn to 1. So it's going to turn as index of the other process, which is change. If let's say you have 2, then you're going to be 2. It's, uh, if it's 1, you have 1. So it is a other process. You have P0 and P1 only. So this one is under P0. Of course, it's going to turn as the index of other process. So it's going to change to index uh, integer 1 here. Going to have while. This one, remember, this is J. Just now, in the general form, it should be similar at above. Flag 1. Okay, flag 1, not flag 0. This one is J. So let's see the example. This J re follow the turn. Turn is what? Another uh, process. Okay, now here is turn equal to J also. What will happen when you have both? So do nothing. So this is under critical section. And flag equal to zero is fall, which is not ready. If P0 is not ready, what will happen is going to be RS. Another one which is similar, you just change the value of flag and also turn. Because you only have two process, so it's easier. So this means that the process want to execute but it will allow the process to run first for this part. So you want to execute this P0. But if you have P1, another process is going to allow the other process to run first. The process perform busy waiting until other process has finished its own critical section. After the current process enter its critical section and adds or remove a random number from the share buffer. After complete the critical session, it set its own flag to false. This one, which is it is not ready. Indicate it that does not wish to execute anymore. So in here, you're going to go to the RS. So let's see. Uh, the exercise 3, what will happen? There is a continuous of exercise 3 first. We go one by one. So if you can see here, what is actually uh, the definitions of each of the line?
<coughs> I am ready to enter CS. Flag equal to uh, flag zero equal to true or process zero. Okay. This one is mentioned what just now. The uh, this line mentions that you can allow other to execute first. So it's mentioned, but you can execute your own critical section if you want to process. You can see here, then as a, sorry, sorry, this one will allow the other process to run first. Okay. This line, if you're ready to enter and it is your turn, I will wait. That's why it's mentioned here. This line, do nothing. It's just waiting. And for this part, uh, otherwise I will enter the CS, this one. Okay. Lastly, the line, I don't want to enter anymore. It's not ready. So maybe you can try uh, to go through one by one again. What is the meaning by each line? So entrance to the CS is Granted for the process P0, this one. If P1 does, does not want to enter its CS, so flat 1 equal to false. Similar also. So if P1 has given priority to PO by setting turn, okay, this one is similar things, which is just now we look into this program. So let's see the example. What is the event for the TI if two concurrent process reaching to enter the CS? So if you have two, P1, P0 and P1. Check if the following is preserved, which is mutual solutions, progress and bounded weighting. So you were given with this table, true, false, true, false. You already know about this true, false for the flat. There will be also a things when you have both true, which is both are ready to enter the CS. The rest, I guess, over here in this example, there is no uh, similar condition. For the ready to enter, but this it is concurrently wishing to enter the CS. So what happened when you have P0, P1, P0 equal to true. P1 flat 1 false. It's not ready, but P0 is ready. So it is mentioned, okay, it's mentioned the one equal to one. If P1 is want to enter, then it give P1, isn't it? But now, flag 1 is uh, false. So, you just focus on P0, which is P0 request to enter CS. P0 request to enter CS. Second, Second here, you still have the similar true and false for 0 and 1. It gives you a turn. So after you request, what happened just now I mentioned, you already request. And of course, you can enter. So you're going to have P0 enter your CS. What is the uh, Third condition just now in the table. Okay, this one is from previous slide. Okay, this this table. But this is what happened actually. Uh, when you are having all this. All these things that happen when you have a two concurrent process. Try to enter the CS. Okay, next. For third one. You have true, true. Now you have uh, P0 is true, P1 also true, but you can see at this time, your turn is equal to 0. So means that 
you cannot you go not going to give other process to coming in uh, to do first right so this one is changed to true so p1 now request to enter cs just now do nothing uh, it's not ready but now you can see it changed to true so it's going to request to enter cs can it enter cs or not so next uh, t3 then you can see it's changed already okay this one is not ready so it's already finished for process zero i think p0 now this is similar it's already ready it asks to uh, enter already so it's going to be enter or execute the okay so this one first before this enter actually it is like uh, parallelly do together so just now for p0 when it's already false so you're going to execute this one is what just now i mentioned to you you're going to have the go to the reminder section after you finish when you have a flag equal to false so you do the reminder section okay then after you request p1 actually it's happened together t3 and t4 because uh process zero execute to rs and your process one will be enter the cs now so this is the flow and the fifth one okay this one is false this one is true after enter what will happen so these two you're going to go to uh execute the rs for p0 which is similar things nothing actually happened this one will be execute rs similar thing what happened now you are doing a p1 also uh concurrently happen then suddenly it's change suddenly the process one change which is false it is not ready it's not ready but this one you already execute now which is execute rs execute rs now it's happened to your process zero but suddenly for process one is changed so it's also will be doing a similar thing after you equal to false for the flag so p1 also execute rs so for false which is similar and suddenly your uh, your p1 also change again equal to true so what happened it's going to request again because you already execute isn't it execute so you want to try to enter again so request then it's already it's going to be continue depending on the uh depending on the scenario that you need to focus on depend on the given table here maybe if let's say after this is going to be true or false so what happened here is under a uh, patterson algorithm which is just now similar table shows a process that can enter its cs for different value which is flag and also turn so this is the turn value uh, from your program similar also flag and uh, flag one and flag zero for process that can enter the cs which one that you're going to uh, pick which one you're going to pick so this is like a table uh, simplest table that you can for, uh, refer to last time in digital logic subject you have like zero plus zero you will get what zero plus one you will get what so this is also similar if you have true false 
1, then you're going to have P0 to enter the CS. You have false true, 0, then you're going to have P1 enter. So all these conditions uh, as a general or basic reference for under Peterson algorithm. You also going to refer to this and you're going to get summarization table. After this, you have another continuous from exercise 3 just now. So please try to complete it, which is uh, basically sim quite similar. You can also refer to this uh, basic table, but uh, this one is mostly too general, but you need to uh, put also what is event for each of the uh, situations that given. It is not going to be totally similar, okay? Might be it's depend on the question also. Okay, uh, let's have five minutes break. After this, we're going to continue with the next slide, okay? Is it okay or not? No one uh, open your webcam, uh, so I, I cannot see anything. Take a five break. Five minute breaks, okay? Then we're going to continue.
<coughs> okay, let's continue. Please enable your webcam. Let's continue with our class. <coughs> enable your webcam, please. Because you also did not respond with <laughs> my question just now. So I don't know whether you are here or not. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue. I think the rest, <laughs> I don't know whether they are not available uh, or might be they are away. So let's continue with our next <coughs> slide. Just now we already finished uh, with example 3. But there is an extension of example 3. I hope that you can try the extension of this example exercise 3. So next let's see on the uh, solutions still under our CS critical section. And... We want to try to solve a problem using logs. So you have another solution which is using logs. So software-based solution, uh, example of Peterson, are not guaranteed to work on your modern computer architecture. Although you said we already learned Peterson, but why? Sometimes it also cannot solve our several solution. So there is another solution that you can use, which is using log. So many systems provide your hardware support for implementing the critical section code. So the solutions are based on the idea of locking. It's uh, still under do and while condition but now you are having a locking in between for your critical section and also your reminder section which is release the lock and acquiring lock which basically is quite similar because you need to request before you go and enter the cs after you leave also you need to go to the rs only that you use the term of locking uh, it is purpose for protecting critical region via locks. So this is the example of general code that you might use under locking uh, algorithm. So the advantages for the Patterson just now you already learned on Patterson. So this is a Patterson algorithm. But still there is a problem. So the the disadvantages or the problem that might occur in Patterson's is it involves busy waiting and it is limited to two processors only. Just now in your example 3, you see only two processors, right? 
so you cannot apply into more processes so it's only limited to two process two processes for patterns so this is the solution using your logs so it is just inform you uh, how you're going to solve the uh, patterns now let's see on our last i think uh subtopic for module six or you have another one synchronization hardware so your modern machines which is your new uh modern computer architecture of course provide special atomic hardware instruction to implement lock just now under a lock Okay, so atomic is equal to non-interruptible. Two type instruction. First one is set memory word and set value. Second swap contact uh, of two memory words. So let's see one by one. Just now you have test and another one is swap. So let's see on the test and set first. Test and set instruction is a single indivisible, uh, indivisible machine instruction known simply as TS. And it was introduced by IBM for its multi processing system, which is 360, uh, 370 computers. This is under the system. Uh, in a single mission cycle, it tests to see if the key is available and if it is, you're going to set it to unavailable. So th that is happen for the single mission cycle. If you test and you see a key that available, you're going to change set to unavailable. The key is a single bit of storage location that you're going to contain on uh, on this 0 and 1, which is 0 if it is free or 1 if it's busy. Only two conditions that can enter and available in the storage location. So let's see is, uh, here uh, the example. So you're going to have, uh, this is the definitions of test and set instruction. Properties excludes automatically, atomically, return the original value of past parameter, set new value of past parameter to true. So you're going to set it equal to true. How are you going to relate this test and set for CS application. This is under a new hardware, uh, hardware synchronization hardware. But how you're going to relate still under our critical section? A process of one. If let's say you can be have a P zero, P one, P two. So let's say you have a process which is we assume as P one will test a condition using test and set instruction before you're going to enter CS. Just now you know you're going to request, 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 but how are you going to approve before you enter the CS? Is it you just approve to enter a CS or P0, P1 just now? So here is the test and set before you can enter or accept to be entered in the CS. If no other process was in the CS, this is your CS, let's say. So it is empty, then your P1 can allow to be proceed. And the condition code will be changed from 0 to 1. So you're going to have from 0 to 1. Later, when P1 want to exit or already exit your CS, the condition code is reset back. So it's going to be go back to the zero. So there is another process known. Okay, you can 
proceed to request or enter the CS if it is zero. On the zero condition, it is free. So people know, okay, it is free, it's empty. You can try to request to your CS. So it is empty. Or you can just enter, request enter the CS. If it's one, it's going to be busy. You know that there is another process inside. So on the other hand, if P1 find a busy condition code, then it plays in waiting loop where it continue to test condition code and wait until it free. So it try to see and check whether CS equal to zero or a one. So P1 will try to check. Similar also when you have like P0, in a time, they're going to check a condition of CS using the test and set. So share boolean variable log indicate to false, which is log equal to zero. Each process reaching to execute CS code. So this is under a do and while again. But now you can see you're going to use a lot. So busy waiting equal to process repeatedly. Check to see if a condition is true. Until you're going to see it is a true or a one, uh, zero. So you're going to wait for you to accept to go into the CS. So solution re uh, result in busy waiting what you can solve because you need to wait until it free right so what is the solution if you find that it is a busy waiting what about bounded waiting can be a cure or not so however this algorithm does not satisfy bounded waiting so you can try to check a uh, uh, reference uh, that I provided in the learning uh, to have uh, extra information about this test and set. So you can see here, uh, wait here or test until if log is true. So this is the solution for waiting. If not, set. If it is not, then set one and continue. So you're going to try to do similar things. But is there anything that you can do in terms of solutions if let's say you have a busy? Uh, so you can try to find out in our textbooks in it uh, the algorithm does not satisfy bounded waiting. Read a book for the solution and your answer is at page 210212 whether it is bounded waiting or not. Later on, maybe I will ask you in next class, okay, what is the answer? And there is also uh, explanation on this, okay? So let's see another one is mutex logs. So in your previous solution, which is under your synchronized hardware, and also uh, another uh, several solution like Peterson's. So they are complicated and generally inaccessible to application programmer. OS designer build software tools to provide a critical session problem. So you're going to solve the critical under our CS to solve a problem. Simplest tools is mutex logs. So previously, there's, there is several algorithm you find out, we already discussed together, but compared to the Mutex logs, because lo previously all the solutions are complex and it is also inaccessible for application program. So now we have the simplest one called as Mutex logs, which has a Boolean variables available associated with it with it indicate if the logs is available or not. Just now it's like already free or not, right? But now it is available 
or not however there is more robust tool that you uh, that can have behavior similar to mutex lots but can also provide more sophisticated way for processes to synchronize their activities so maybe you can try to google there is a lot of other uh, algorithm which is also similar to mutex logs under sephoras so uh, this one is a method of visual signaling usually by means of flag or a light they are used in Railways, which is rest arm, track is clear, lower arms, track is busy and train must wait. Another one is between foreign navy ships to communicate message which, when you have a long distance between each other. So this is a example, two example. When you have like a visual signaling, I think uh, this one is using red, uh. <laughs> communicate uh, using a uh, visual signs. So, example here, you can see when you have this kind of look because I don't know, I'm not, <laughs> I also never see this in real life, so I don't know about this code. So stop must be look like this. And this one is all clear. So might be you can try to proceed. So you can see here for A, another trend is try to approach and your trend must stop to wait uh, to pass. Another one for B, your trend can continue. So this one like a green light, this one is red light. So similar function in our OS, it signal if when a resource is free and can be used by a process. So similar also in our daily activities in this like example of design, also similar how we're going to trigger information for our process or our operating system whether we know that we can proceed or not for a process. So here, this example we apply in our operating system by using Sephora, which is protocol mechanism to do a task communication. Specifically, Sephora are used to control access to a shared resources, which is mutual education, signal the uh, occurrence of an event, and lastly, allow two tasks to synchronize their activities. So this is a major activities or task for a Sephora. So synchronization tool that provide more sophisticated way that mutex logs for process to synchronize their activities. So Sephora S with a integers variables can only be accessed with two indivisibles, uh, which is we call as atomic operation. First is when one process modifies Sephora then no other process can modify so this is one uh one things that you need to know another one is under a weight and signal which is normally for origin you're going to call uh p and v in your dutch so p is what v, p will be to weight and to test v is to sign or to increment so there is a uh, things that you need to understand about weight and signal so what variables you going to use for it under sephora so for here you can see uh, the definitions of weight in the operations p
uh, with uh, s here while s less or equal to zero. So it is busy waiting. Note there is a semicolon after while. So you can see here this one is comment. So the code gets stuck here while s equal to zero. Then the code will be resumed if it's uh, more than zero. So this is the condition. So this one imply a busy which is critical in your CS or origin. Process calling with for, uh, operation must wait until s more than zero before going into critical section. So there is a sum code that you can try to look into under a critical section and also reminder section. So in this condition also is important. Sephora s equal to zero. This imply that there is a process in your CS. So just now also you can see it's quite similar and the Sephora equal to zero but for the test and set it is one if something's that available in your CS. So it is slightly different <coughs> and vice versa. So please make sure you remember if Sephora zero it mentions that something or it's going to be wait but for the test and Wait, just now you're going to see that uh, 1, you have a value of 1 for a uh, some things that available or processed in critical CS. Only 0 is will be free. Okay, so you have okay. several. Yes? Can you go back to the previous slide? This one? 54. Yes. How will he get out of the while that's inside the wait function? Wait. While equal to... While inside the wait function. Sweet. Okay. Wait for S here. So while uh, this condition, you're going to do this one. So, sepatutnya, uh, normally it's going to be else from here right <laughs> so there is another condition else it will be uh, if let's say s is more than zero you're going to do something else isn't it uh, to do uh, the next or you're going to exit with this condition this one is just an example so it is not a full uh, program here oh, okay okay thank you so now you can see there is a types of Sephora, which is counting Sephora and binary Sephora. For counting Sephora, integer value can range over an unrestricted domain. While for binary Sephora, integer value can range only between 0 and 1. So this is two example only, so it is quite easy for you to differentiate between counting and binary. And binary Sephora is same as a mutex logs. So you can see, uh, last time it's mentioned in mutex log, there is several other algorithm also other way, uh, quite similar to mutex log. So this is an uh, one of it, which is binary Sephora. Uh, Sephora can implement a counting Sephora S as a binary Sephora also. So under Sephora use this, when you have a method uh, method for you uh, to apply and also solve a problem, you can see there will be a uses or a specific way or things that you're going to apply the algorithm. So now under Sephora use this, you can uh, try to solve various synchronized problem. So this is the purpose of use this method. So it's going to be has a pros and cons. Normally, sometimes like might be for mutex log is specific for several others problem for Sephora several other problem, uh, Patterson's uh, several other problem. So all this try to solve a problem, but sometimes this specific one. 
a solution uh, to your CS problem. Of course, this one is general one. Uh, example here, create a Sephora sinks indicate uh, initiations to one. So wait to sinks and this is your critical section. Uh, it's depend on your conditions and you're going to use signal sinks. So uh, this one is some other code which is going to do this uh, PS and VS under sync. Just now over right here, also quite similar. You're going to use a signal. So with Sephora S here, if let's say, you're going to see if let's say you have S equal to S minus 1. So while with why this condition, you're going to do S equal to S minus 1. For the critical session here, it's going to be uh, signal Sephora S. So it will be plus 1. So refer back to your uh, notes. Might be here, it is a uh, equal. So this one is under reminder section. So there will be another example for you to refer 1 and 2. This is under Sephora usage. Uh, this one we're going to discuss together later on because it's going to be uh, quite long. Especially I want to focus and to do this to exercise. So you try to do and look into this example one and example two first about the stages from stage one until stage four. What will happen, especially for all the condition you are given with the uh, condition of the question. And similar also for example one, but example one is uh, only two, P1 and P2. So it will be quite small uh, compared to this one you have. Oh, similar one, but the condition is much long. <laughs> so later, we will look into this exercise together. Okay, for some, uh, example one and example two. So let's see the theory first under Sephora uh, implementation. Just now we learn on the use case, use case, but now we're going to see in the conditions of busy waiting. So for uh, must guarantee that no two processes can execute the waiting and also signal. So this is the condition that you might uh, focus on. And the Sephora, uh, Semiphora here on the uh, same uh, that at the same time. So in the same time, you cannot execute, let's say, P0 and P1. You cannot execute wait and signal at the same time. Thus, the implementation become the critical session CS where the wait and signal code are place in your CS. You're going to inform similar also from others algorithm. The implementation is based on busy waiting. Busy waiting in critical section implementation, which is the code here wait and also signal. But implementation code is short. Little busy waiting is critical section rarely occupied. So, can you implement uh, Sephora with no busy waiting? So, this one is also explained in your uh, extra notes there in the reference. So, it is yes. So, you have the explanation. You try to look into whether you can fly to implement uh, Sephora with busy waiting. So semaphore implementation with no busy waiting still under the similar, but now no busy waiting. So with each semaphore there is associated with waiting queue. Each entry uh, in a waiting queue has two items only, which is value and pointer, which is you're going to point 
to the next record in the list. While for the value, you're going to have the type of integer, of course, normally when we play around with the value. There is two operation under your busy waiting. First is block, second is wake up. So block uh, plus the process involve the operation of waiting queue. While for wake up, remove one of the processes in the waiting queue and place it in a ready queue so this is two operation under no busy waiting another one uh, we're going to play also with the exercise but we will do the example together first before our ex exercise here so please try to do example one and two and also exercise one under your semi uh, semaphora uh, algorithm i don't know whether you have the answer or not but we will discuss together so you can see the solution so there is also another example which is equal to quite similar to your exercise okay so let's we proceed first before we will discuss about our example and as uh, exercise under that log and starvation i can't remember who asked me about that log last time uh, or maybe this is from uh, this section so that log and starvation incorrect use in your semiphora operation can produce that log and also starvation so for that log two or more process are waiting indefinitely for event that can be caused by the only one of waiting process while starvation last time we also already learned together if you still remember last class so it is indefinite blocking which is a process may never be removed from a semaphora queue in which it is suspended if you still remember our problem in starvation what also the solution i think the solution last time is edging right for our pre uh, previous module five i guess so so that will be also related to your semaphora so we can try to conclude that mutual as exclusion prevent our that log maintain with your test and set wait and signal and lastly your semaphora pv and also another one under new text synchronization process using hardware and software mechanism this is only two uh, two short sim uh, summary for your module six Later on, before we end up our module 6, we're going to do together the example 1, 2, exercise 4. And there is a several other examples that related to exercise 4. So, I hope you can try first. So, then I can ask you about the answer before we discuss together. Is it okay? So please also still remind that we're going to have our test 2 upcoming. So the test 2 will be until module module what? 5. Ha? I forgot already. Uh, still there is no discussion but we're going to do a vetting by 18. So after that, we will have a complete uh, set of the question for test 2. Then I'm going to inform all of you. Might be we're going to do also uh, a spot question together. Okay, any question? If, we, uh, if you don't have any question, please scan your QR code because I can see that it is not complete uh how many here two 
22. Oh, I think extra. Someone uh, not joining this webinar by this scan. It's okay. Uh, thank you, class. Please try to do as yes. Can I share the QR code again? Oh, okay. I didn't scan. Uh, I also share this QR code at your e-learning. Maybe you can also try to look oh, into. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you everyone. Uh, meet you again at this class tomorrow. tomorrow uh, Wednesday. Bye-bye. Uh, doctor? Yes? Is this still going to be MCQ as well or? Uh, for now, it is MCQ, but part B, I'm not confirmed yet. Oh, so it's going to be uh, two parts. Uh, supposedly it's going to be two parts. Oh, okay, okay. Okay.